the Atlantic and St. Lawrence Railroad was the company that laid down the Berlin subdivision, and the subdivision's original purpose was to serve the many logging camps that were in this area at the time. But in later years, the Atlantic and St. Lawrence adapted to passenger trains to bring people from Portland, Maine to Berlin, New Hampshire. They would later build north to the Canadian border in Island Pond, and that is where the Grand Trunk Railway came in. The Grand Trunk Railway expanded service on the Berlin subdivision immensely, especially when the pulp and paper mills started springing up all along the river. But then, in the early 1920s, the Grand Trunk would be bought out by its now parent company, Canadian National Railway. Canadian National operated the subdivision under the Grand Trunk name for several years during the steam era. The steam era had a lot of hope, but as all things do, they had their accidents. This was a steam locomotive up on jacks getting wheels replaced when the locomotive flopped onto its side after a jack let go. But on the bright side, the crashes and accidents did not affect the steam era. Business did. There was no longer need for steam in the Berlin Gorham area, so Canadian National removed the engine house in both Berlin and Gorham, and within a few years, Canadian National stopped running steam on the Berlin subdivision in favor of new diesel-electric locomotives. The locomotives that replaced the steam engines were these, the Montreal Locomotive Works M420s, and the Electromotive Division GP9. But in later years, Canadian National and Grand Trunk realized that GP9s weren't enough, so EMD built them a new locomotive, the GP40-2LWs, and these would last in service on the Berlin subdivision until the St. Lawrence and Atlantic had full control of it in the late 1990s. The St. Lawrence and Atlantic was unique in its early years as it only ran leaser locomotives for a long time. One such leaser, being the 3204, was from Locomotive Leasing Partners. They allowed St. Lawrence and Atlantic to paint it in their Bumblebee paint scheme. The locomotive now bears a new identity as St. Lawrence and Atlantic 3008 under the Genesee and Wyoming ownership. Now, taking a step back into the 1980s, the steam program the Canadian National ran ran several excursions down the Berlin subdivision with recently restored Northern class 484 steam locomotive 6218. The 6218 was chartered by the 470 Railroad Club for their trip to Portland, Maine from Island Pond, Vermont on several occasions. The 6218 was a strong candidate for restoration as it had only been retired about 10 years earlier. The 6218 would then be retired when the Canadian National Steam Program ended. Berlin subdivision was starting to take shape into the modern era. The modern era consisted of locomotive leasing partners, leasers, all over the system. This was extremely evident in Lewiston Junction. You could see GP15 number 1512 or GP38 2607 working the yard almost every single day. Unfortunately, I only got to see these locomotives operate one time, and that is one of the most recognizable moments in the SLR's modern history. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here tonight. I'm Tori Ryden. The long cleanup process is underway tonight in Gilead, now more than 24 hours after a freight train derailed. Nearly 20 cars went off the tracks, prompting evacuations and traffic nightmares. But officials say this whole situation could have been a lot worse. News Ace Tracy Sable has the latest from Gilead. It felt surreal. It felt like it wasn't actually happening. It felt like a movie. It was one of those kind of weird scenarios that you never 
never expect, of course. And that recognizable moment was the 2009 Gilead Main train derailment. This wreck is a staple of the SLR history book, as it's one of the very few severe wrecks that the railroad has had in its short life. There have been many smaller derailments, but nothing to this scale. This wreck was a full-on mainline freight train that derailed at track speed of 25 miles an hour. With 82 cars and 17 derailed, three of which being loaded propane tankers, this would go down in history as one of the worst wrecks that the St. Lawrence and Atlantic Railroad will ever experience in its short life. Shortly after the Gilead train derailment, I started paying attention to the St. Lawrence and Atlantic a lot more. I had always wanted to see a mainline freight train in person, as I had only seen them in YouTube videos until this time. When I was in second grade, my SLR chasing career had started. I chased 393, the northbound freight train from Lewiston Junction, from Berlin to Grofton. And that is a night I will never forget as long as I live. As that was the first time I had seen the road freights in person. And I have chased them almost every week since. In 2002, a few months before I was born, St. Lawrence and Atlantic was bought by the Genesee in Wyoming, and in that moment, the St. Lawrence and Atlantic's roster was repainted into the iconic orange, black, and yellow paint scheme of the Genesee and Wyoming corporate. Most rail fans don't like the Genesee in Wyoming, as it takes away the originality of the railroad it buys, but... I honestly don't mind it, because what it does is it shows that the St. Lawrence and Atlantic had the value to be bought. And that marks the end of the history book. The St. Lawrence and Atlantic is now owned by Genesee, Wyoming, and they are not going anywhere anytime soon. I hope everyone has enjoyed this presentation. And let's see how far the St. Lawrence and Atlantic has come in all 39 years of their operation.
as we can see, St. Lawrence and Atlantic is doing just fine under the Geneseo Wyoming ownership. And the engineer, pretty friendly. Now, as any professional project does, it has its blooper moments. Roll the bloopers! Wow, he is hauling We're gonna pace him right now. Woo! He is moving! Alright, time to pace. Oh boy! Oh, yeah, that, that is definitely Greg. Yeah. 30. 30 again. exactly? Yep. But he's, st he's still accelerating. Do the horn, do the horn. Come on, Greg. Come on. <laughs> yeah! I don't know what I'm seeing right now, but here's 513. Okay. They just pulled into Danville. What the hell are you doing here?